Welcome to The Fight with Teddy Atlas, presented by Dynamic Striking. I'm Ken Rideau, joined as always by my friend and boxing hall of famer, the great Teddy Atlas. We're back home today at the Trinity Boxing Club to record a fight plan, which is brought to you by our friends at MyBookie. Check them out at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code ATLAS for a 50% credit on your first deposit. Today, we're gonna break down the Tyson Fury, Dillian White fight. One that everyone's looking forward to. I know I'm looking forward to it. Teddy, what should we expect from both guys? 100,000 people are gonna fill Wembley Stadium. Are looking forward. That alone tells you how big it is, especially to close the pond with our beautiful brothers and sisters that we miss and we love over there. Both these fighters have a special distinction in this sport. Fury is the linear champion, having taken the title from the man who took it from the man. And, well, Mr. White, his distinction is having to wait longer than anybody as the mandatory to get his shot. Matter of fact, I think he's been waiting since before Joe Lewis was born. <laughs> I mean, it's been, it's, it's been quite a while. So with no further delay, as in the words of the great Mills Lane, let's get it on. Let's go inside and find out who the man, the real man, is. All right, Teddy, heavyweight fight, the equivalent of the boxing Super Bowl, Dillian White, Tyson Fury. Looking forward to this one, and I know the people in England are looking forward to it. What does Dillian White have to do to get the upset here? First of all, I, you know, I don't think it'd be extraordinary if he does. It is a tougher fight than most people think. You know, Fury's the most complete heavyweight in the business. He can go get you. He proved that now in the last couple of fights with Wilder, and he can box. He proved that before. He can outbox. He can be very fleet, even nimble, and responsible defensively for such a big guy. Sometimes, you know, he. He looks like Goliath with David's brain, you know, uh, boxing like a smaller guy. Uh, but recently he's fallen in love with coming forward, being that sick and destroy guy and using his bulk, his size, uh, just to wear guys down as he's done with Wilder and, and to get the knockout as he has with Wilder. It's gonna come down, often does, whether it's heavyweights or lightweights, to the jab, controlling, the distance, controlling the ring. You know, whoever uses their jab best will have an edge, will separate themselves a little bit. And both guys, Fury, we know he has a pretty good jab, uh, especially when he's on his legs moving. He uses his jab, uh, he'll he get angles, he'll he make it difficult for you to get a good bird's eye shot at him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because he, he's not letting you get set. Uh, but White's got a good accurate jab. Uh, and White can do more things than maybe some people realize. He's, he's good, he's pretty good at counterpunching. You know, he can come forward, he likes to put aggression on, likes to put the heat on, but White can also catch you coming, throw nice counter shots. Uh, the more versatile all around, yeah, it's Fury. You know, because he, it's, he separates himself in those areas more where he's moving, he's moving. You know, White doesn't really use his legs to be mobile, although I did see him use them one time to survive, where he moved laterally to survive. And that's the one thing that would worry me about White. He always seems to get hurt one time before the night's over, <laughs> you know? And, and listen, he's been knocked out twice. He doesn't have a bad chin. He gets hit with punches that he doesn't really detect. And so, therefore, it's easier to hurt him with those kind of punches. But for him to pull off the upset, going to start with the jab, because you can't allow Fury to dominate with his jab. And it's going to come down to, did his people do their homework and did he do his, but did his people do his homework and look at film and understand some of the habits, some of the flaws, the strengths, of course, but some of the flaws of Fury? Uh, have they seen that? There's two things that stand out 
that's obvious because Wilder took advantage of one of these things a couple times with Fury. Fury, yeah, he uses his legs, but he'll go straight back. And we talked about this before, and I talked about it when I was doing the fights on ESPN, that you shouldn't go straight back two, three steps in a row. You should go one and done. <laughs> one, counter, do something, move your head, step to the, but don't keep going straight back because you're in the path of the punch. So that's one thing that White has to be cognizant of, is that when Fury does jab and go out, which he do sometimes, and then he goes out again, and he goes out again, bang, 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 back him up, double the jab, I tripled it, but double the jab up, and then finish with the right hand. He's in your path. He's right there. Pursue him. The other thing, and this is something that, quite honestly, I don't think anyone's ever pointed this out. I can't believe it. No, I haven't seen one analyst, one commentator, one trainer point this out. And I don't think, quite frankly, I'd be surprised if white people knew about this. And maybe, this, maybe they learned from this. Not that I'm looking to help them. <laughs> uh, I'm not, because I, I'm not getting a check from them, I don't think. I don't think I even get a thank you, Teddy, if, <laughs> if I was to. But I think it's that important and just that significant that it, it could change the whole fight if he does this one thing. If he noticed that Fury, we all have habits. Fury has a habit. What does he like to do? You know, he... He's not a huge combination puncher. He's very basic if you get down to it. Pop, pop, he throws a one, two. He, boom, he throw a counter uh, when he goes back. Boom, he go back. Boom, boom, he throws some counters. But he loves to throw that one, two. And then after he throws that one, two, if he feels you're close to him or you're putting a little pressure on him, you know what he does? I'm gonna show you. He throw that one, two, right? Pop, pop. And then you coming close to me, he go to grab you. He'll fall in and he'll grab you. Yeah, watch the film. Look at the film. And, and nobody has pointed this out. Nobody has seen this. And again, I'm sure white people haven't seen it. But you see it now. If he takes advantage of this, he can win the heavyweight title just on this. Again, that, that's how big this is. Where he'll throw the one, two, boom, boom. Or sometimes he won't even throw it. He'll feel the guy coming at him. And when he comes at him, he just looked to lock up. Now I'm gonna break it down to slow motion. This is what it is. Yeah, he's exposing himself. He is giving himself up. He hasn't paid a price for it yet. Why? Because nobody's made him. Nobody has been aware of this or ready for this, prepared for this. It is the sweet science. You're supposed to take advantage of things like this. Again, I'll show you the breakdown. He's doing this to grab. He shouldn't get away with that. So, you go to grab me like that, all right? Good. I'm gonna throw the one, two, boom, boom, bang, bang! Or, I, here's the choice, go ahead, go to grab me, boom, boom, and then you go, all right, that's what you're trying to get, right? Do it again. Boom, boom, bop, bop, punch. Don't accept the embrace. Don't accept the clinch. Now, one other option to that. Don't even throw, just, just come to full in. He feels, again, he feels the presence, the pressure. He'll do this, which is smart sometimes, it is, to tie a guy up if you don't want to fight on the inside. But the way he does, it can be dangerous. So you have a choice. When he goes to do that, boom, boom, you counter, or do it again. Take a step back, bam, bam. And make him really reach. Accentuated, exaggerated. Make him, make him really fall in. Bam, bam. Take a half a step back. Throw the uppercut because he's going to be leaning. I said Dillian White is really live, a live dog in this fight. He can win this fight, and if he does that, he just he might be the the big deal over there in. Uh, London, across the pond, with all our brothers and sisters that we love so much. He might be the man, instead of Fury. All right, Teddy, we talked about what Dillian White has to do to pull the upset. What does Tyson Fury have to do to get the win? And to stay champion. To stay linear champion. Linear champion of the world. And 
other than Canelo, and maybe even with Canelo, the hottest guy out there. A good, some could argue he's hotter and gets more. He's the only guy who can get more money than uh, more De Niro than Mr. Canelo. He's a heavyweight, but he's a huge star. He's a genius promoter, and he has come back from the brink in life where he was suicidal, where he was going through terrible times with alcohol and with substance abuse and fell into a deep depression. He came out of that. Not everyone comes out. That, that's unbelievable. That speaks to his strength, his inner strength that he came out of that. And in the ring, he's been on a brink, on the floor, in that first wilder fight where it looked like he was gone. It looked like he was shot with a gun. I mean, he was laying there, gone. And... He, he kind of pulls himself up at, at the, you talk about at the 11th hour. I mean, it got <laughs> up. Made it. So he shows you the mental dimension you have to have to be a champion. And that's one of the reasons why he's a champion. That is the reason why he's a champion. And he also is versatile. I talked about it in the opening. He can box, he can go get you. He's a big son of a gun, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> he can put that weight on you and weigh you down. Uh, He's got to notice, first of all, he better not be overlooking White. Because that can happen. He better not be overlooking him. And he better have done his film with his people and notice the things that I noticed. That, like anyone, Day and White, like Fury, but Day and White, he has good habits, he's got some bad habits. One of his bad habits I picked up is that when you throw the jab at him, Nobody's corrected this on him. To block it, he'll, he'll go high with his arms. You see something that's left open, don't you? Mm -hmm. The body. He'll go up here high a little bit. So you go up high when you're doing white. I'm going to be fury. So he goes up high like that. So just, uh, just a quick, boom, pop. Just a quick, pop, pop. Real quick, just like a slingshot. Yeah. Pop, pop, just sling it. Sling it fast. You know, you get him, you get him to... Be unprotected downstairs? Well, visit them downstairs. Put a little water in the basement. And the other thing that I noticed about White, and again, White, White he, he's got dimensions to him. He, he likes to go get you, but he does it pretty smart, calculating. You know, he won't run in there. Uh, and, and if you run in there to him, you better be careful. He'll look to counter, you know, with that, that range, the, those gaps. But the Bad habit, the second bad habit I noticed about him is that when you throw, when he feels your pressure and you throw something, especially a power punch, like a hook or a right hand, to avoid it, I don't know how you allowed this to develop as a habit, really, because for me these are fundamentals in teaching. But what he'll do is, and I'm illustrating white, Right now, what he'll do is when he gets those powers, he'll block it. He'll, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll tighten up. You know, he'll, he'll get into that peekaboo. He'll tighten up, and he'll go this to get away from it, which it will. It'll, it'll go around his neck, past him. But the uppercut is there. If the guy would set him up, mm -hmm. I think Fury, if he's watched his film, if he's prepared for this properly, can set him up for that punch. When he sees a power punch, he leans forward. Like that, either one. He leans forward. So what do you do? Give him something to lean forward. Give him this, boom, boom, and give him that. Give him this, boom, boom, and give him that. If you do that, well, you might be able to redo your singing career. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you're a pretty good singer, right? You know, you're a great promoter. You really are. You're a character. You're good for the sport. Uh, you came back from, from a terrible place. I have nothing but uh, respect for that, admiration for that. Uh, you can sing again. And then it's time you don't have to do it for Bob Aaron's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you can just do it because you're happy. All right, Teddy, for the guys at my bookie and the people looking to place a wager on this bet, we've got Dillian White, plus 400, Tyson Fury, minus 600. What do you like? All right, put a, put a few shekels. You know, we, I love you guys across the pond. 
If you put a couple of shekels, as, as you can see, Teddy Ellis only has a couple of shekels. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm, sometimes uh, I talk about being honest. My daughter says, you're a little too honest uh, sometimes. But put a couple of shekels, believe it or not, on Mr. White. Yeah, at that, uh, those odds, I, I have to back my words. I just finished doing a fight plan saying that this is a real, this could be a dangerous fight. Mm -hmm. It's a real fight. Um, at that price, yeah. Give me something. Give me some. I, at the end of the day, it's hard to go against Fury. Yeah. It really is. But at those odds, knowing that White is legitimate in the way that I just explained it, has a legitimate chance, I, I'll take a shot. Yeah. What's the over-under? Over-under, nine and a half, even money, roughly. I'm going with the over. I mean, could there be an argue? Yeah. But um, I've already talked about how Dillian White gets hurt and fight. He's been knocked out twice. But it's been punches that he doesn't see. Uh, I think he'll be prepared. His eyes will be wide open. Uh, I think he'll see what he has to see. And uh, Fury is not a TNT puncher. Yeah. He's a big son of a gun and he can hurt you. And he's knocked out water a couple of times. We know that. But he, um, he, he's not a Mike Tyson, Joe Lewis, you know. He, he's, he's not in that kind of category, or even Klitschko, uh, uh, when the younger Klitschko when he was on top. So I'm going to say it's going go, to go, it's going to go rounds, maybe the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the under, uh, the over. I like the over. All right, there you have it. Uh, Dillian White at, at plus money in the over nine and a half rounds. Check it out, mybookie.ag. Use the promo code ATLAS for a 50% credit on your first deposit. Good luck to everyone, and thanks for being with us.